My whole body is tingling right now. There's one instrument that I like. Let me see if I can find it. This one is not mine, but I like to play it sometimes. Thank you, Jesus. For those who don't speak in tongues, receive the gift of tongues in the name of Jesus. Those who want to speak new tongues, receive new tongues in the name of Jesus. Those who want to flow free, like flow freely in tongues, receive it now in the name of Jesus. May the Spirit of God give you utterance in the name of Jesus. May He take over your tongue right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Let the power of the Holy Ghost come over you right now in the name of Jesus. Because we just finished the fast, like our spirit is so high right now. I just feel, I feel God so strong right now. Oh God, Oh, yeah, man. 
Soto na prekushka halandori ehe rokoba siendo konda baranda yes lord shake the music no koba na 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 shanda ha 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 somebody I see somebody as I'm praying as I'm praying I keep hearing God is telling me prophesy 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 I see somebody here you have a, a child that is not feeling well like feverish the, the child is two years old it's a girl put your right hand on the forehead of this child Receive your healing now in the name of Jesus. Your baby is healed in the name of Jesus. I keep hearing that somebody has like a mass. I don't even know what a mass is, but I keep hearing a mass or something. Like there's a mass. What is a mass? I keep hearing a mass. I command that mass to melt away in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody, oh my God, there's somebody on here. Somebody on here, you had like a partial stroke. You had like a partial stroke. A partial stroke. Or if there's anyone else here that is has stroke or dealing with stroke, I want you to put your right hand on your forehead. Now be healed. I command that spirit of stroke to leave you right now. In the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of stroke to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone that you feel numbness in any side of your body, or you feel weakness in any side of your body, put your right hand on your forehead. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. I command that spirit of numbness to leave you, that spirit of weakness to leave you. Receive strength even as I pray right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody here, you have a 14-year-old son. You have a 14-year-old son. He's going to be a footballer. He actually plays football now. When I'm talking of football, I'm talk, I mean soccer. Like a soccer. He's 14. Plays football. But I, I'm seeing that they, are shoot, they, they, they shot like an arrow. They want to handicap him so he doesn't play. I command 
total deliverance on him right now in the name of Jesus. I shield him. I soak him in the blood of Jesus. He will fulfill his destiny and no evil arrow will come near him in Jesus' name. Amen. I call so break it this soon that in God. There's somebody here. Your name is Elizabeth. 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 I hear fruit of the womb. Put your hand on your stomach. Receive the fruit of the womb right now in the name of Jesus. If there's anybody else here that desires the fruit of the womb, put your hand on your belly. Your womb is blessed. Receive the fruit of the womb right now. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Oh, there's somebody. I don't know if it's you here or somebody you know. Like you were climbing a ladder and you fell. You fell. You broke your waist. Somebody, you were climbing a ladder. You were trying to do some kind of construction work. And you fell off of a ladder. You broke your waist. Put your right hand on your forehead. Or if you know this person I'm talking about, put your hand on your, on your forehead and tap for this person. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in your bones in the name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody, you're asking God for the gift of prophecy. <laughs> it's not just one person. I see, I see a lot of people. I see a number 33, 33. I see a number 33, but it could be more. If you're asking God for that gift of prophecy, put your right hand on your forehead right now. <laughs> I will blow a breeze and you will feel it come and something will start coming from your belly. You will begin to speak. <laughs> When I blow this breeze, you will feel something come over you and your belly is like there will be a stirring up in your belly. You will begin to speak in tongues and you will begin to prophesy. <laughs> Put your right hand on your forehead. You that your hand is on your forehead and you've been desiring the gift of prophecy. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. <sighs> Now begin to speak in tongues. <laughs> it's like something will be staring up in your belly. <laughs> you even start to laugh, and it's like something is staring in your belly. Before you know, even God will begin to speak from your mouth. Retarondo re shapo radigada segregedosa namuna na 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 masanta. Just pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. <laughs> And Hey, I see somebody, I see somebody, they, they put something on your head. You always feel like there's a heaviness on your head. Ah, yakarabala. I need you guys to invite somebody. I don't know, my spirit is so high right now. Put, I see somebody, they put something on your head. It's like a load. You're carrying a load on your head. You always feel this heaviness on your head. And somebody else, you feel movement on your head. Put your hand on your head. If you are here, you feel heaviness. You feel heaviness on your head or you feel movement on your head. Put your hand on your head right now. Thank you, Father. I command that spirit of heaviness to come out of you now. In the name of Jesus, any moving object that has been put in you on your head, I command it to come out. Or any part of your body, I command it to come out now. In the name of Jesus, be free in the name of Jesus. That heaviness is gone. In Jesus' name, if there's anybody else here that feels heaviness somewhere in their body, like you feel heaviness maybe on your back, or you feel like you're carrying something on your shoulder that is heavy, put your right hand on your forehead. I free you from that spirit of heaviness right now in the name of Jesus. Hey, 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 I see our kananama soto nagadigada. I see a man. You have something like you don't know yet, but it's prostrate cancer. <laughs> prostrate. You don't know yet. <laughs> you don't know yet. You don't know yet, but it's, it's building up. But you don't know yet. In fact, every man that is listening to my voice, I want to pray a general prayer for you. Put your hand on your, on your private area. Yes. On you, man. Yes. 
I command that demon to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. That spirit of prostrate cancer out of you now in the name of Jesus. You are free. <laughs> you will feel something jump out of you. Some of you will even be yawning. Somebody you actually coughed. <laughs> Somebody you felt something jumped out when I said that out. You are free. The person that I saw, you didn't even know, but it was building up. <laughs> they wanted to kill you with that stuff. My God. <laughs> Those that tapped into the, the gift of prophecy, make sure you are speaking in tongues. Yes, yes, yes. I see it. I'm looking at somebody. I see like a snake moving in your belly. Like I just see a snake moving in your like I see it. I see it. I see a snake moving in your belly. And no shaba and diga juice. You feel like sometimes you feel like a, a child is moving and you're not even pregnant. But you feel like you have a baby kicking in your belly. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Put your hand on your belly. I command that snake to come out of you now. In the name of Jesus. Angels, pull that snake out of their stomach now. In the name of Jesus, I declare you free from that serpent, that snake that they put in your belly. In the name of Jesus. Somebody you are vomiting now as I pray this prayer. <laughs> I see somebody you are yawning seriously. Oh <laughs> God. Hey. Oh no no mana Somebody God showed you a dream like a spiritual umbrella, like you were covered, like somebody was covering you in an umbrella, and God told you that this is your covering. Stay there. I don't know if it's this ministry, I don't know where they showed you, but you recently had a dream like like an umbrella was covering you and the water, the rain wasn't reaching you and God told you to stay there. God said I should tell you that that dream still stands. Stay there. Stay where he placed you. That you are covered in that place. I don't know who you are, but maybe you are planning to leave the place. But God said he showed you a dream. You were covered like there was a covering like an umbrella was covering you. And he said that that place is your covering. <laughs> he says, stay there. I, I see somebody, Rachel. She says, she's vomiting. My God, you are free. <laughs> she said, I am vomiting. God bless you. you are <laughs> oh my God. I don't know about the horrible Yeah. from you in your sleep you saw it like a like a slippers or sandals or a shoe and you were walking barefoot oh yes yeah, somebody on here you had a dream like that you dreamt and they took your your sandals your shoe you were walking barefoot they want to disgrace you God said I should tell you to go get a shoe or a slippers Go get a shoe right now or a slipper. Somebody, go get a shoe. If this is you, get a shoe. I'm about to do something. They took your shoe or sandals or slippers in your dream. And you are, oh, somebody said that's me. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I, I like when you guys say that's you. Go get your sandals or your slippers or your shoe. Get a shoe and I put I want you to wear it. When you're wearing it, just type I'm wearing it. I want to pray for you. After what I pray and do, God will show it to you. He will show you a dream or a vision where you got your shoe back or your slippers back or something. <laughs> oh my god. 
No, 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 no. When you have it on, just let me know. They want to disgrace you. They want to shame you. They want you to have nothing but wear your shoe and let me know when you're wearing it or your slippers or whatever. Thank you, Jesus. If you're wearing it, just stand still. Put your right hand on your forehead. Father, you just showed me this where they stole their shoe or sandals from them and now they are wearing it. Even as you are wearing this shoe or sandals right now, you have retrieved your shoe back in the name of Jesus. This thing you are wearing is a symbol that you have received it back in the name of Jesus. Whoever stole it from you right now because you obeyed and you got a shoe to wear, it has come back to you. And when you go to sleep, God will show it to you. You will see them bringing it back to you because it is already done. You are free. You are restored in Jesus' name. Somebody, you will feel tingling coming from your leg. Somebody, your leg will start to feel like fire. Somebody, you will even find yourself on the floor because what happened is like deliverance. Somebody, you will be feeling fire on your leg. Ah, that shoe you are wearing is becoming so hot. <laughs> That's God showing you that it is done. If there's anyone here that they've stolen something from you in the dream before whether your clothes your money i don't care what it is if you've dreamt in any way that they stole they took money or something precious your purse or your handbag or your shoe or your dress i want to just pray for you now somebody say i couldn't stand i had to sit down hallelujah <laughs> Ah, I saw somebody fall on the floor. Somebody said, I dreamt last night and I lost my slippers. So that prayer was for you. But if there's anyone here, just somebody, they took your wig from your head. If they've stolen something from you in the sleep before, somebody, they took your wedding ring, somebody, they took your purse, somebody, they took something from you. Ah. There's even somebody you see yourself naked all the time in the dream. I want you to tap into this prayer. These dreams are not good dreams. <laughs> somebody said they stole their certificate and their clothes. I'm reading your comment. Somebody said they stole their money. My God. <laughs> oh, somebody, they took keys from you. They took keys from you. They stole keys from you. They stole keys. I hear it clearly. They stole keys. <laughs> Somebody say, yes, it is me. I fell down. My God. <laughs> God is working. So <laughs> Put your right hand on your forehead for anyone that can ever remember them taking something from you in your dream. Even that one that they cut your hair in your dream. Yes, I hear it. If they cut your hair in your dream before, you always find yourself naked in your dream. Or they, I say, invite somebody. They stole something from you. They cut your hair in the dream. You find yourself naked all the time in the dream. Put your right hand on your forehead. Put your right hand on your forehead. Holy Ghost fire all over your body. Fire from your head to your toe, you demon. <laughs> Return everything you took from them back now. In the name of Jesus and come out of their body. Return it. Their wig, their hair, their ring, their clothes, their shoe, their bag. And that one that you cut their hair. I command your hair to begin to grow again in the name of Jesus. That one that is always naked. I command clothes to come on your body right now in the name of Jesus. You demons, leave them alone. And don't you ever come back. Out of them in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. You are restored. Everything they stole from you is back. Somebody, they stole your papers. It is back. In a few days, you will get a positive result. Positive news from those immigration people. <laughs> a witch was sitting on your paper, but you are free now. In the name of Jesus. In fact, in less than seven days, there's somebody on here. 
you will get a positive news about your papers. You will need to do a video testimony in less than seven days because I saw a lady sitting on your papers. Ha, a witch. You are from Liberia. Yes, you are from. I even see another one from like Kenya or something. Yeah, I saw like a witch, like an older lady sitting. If I that lady right now, she's paralyzed. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you will know that I'm talking to you. Some of you will be feeling tingling sensations all over your body. <laughs> Some of you are currently even yawning right now. Somebody, you fell on the floor when I shouted that out twice. Because something came out of you. <laughs> oh my God. And then I want to pray for all your children if they are home. <laughs> if your children are home. If your children are home, I want all your kids to just come and hear my voice. All of them. <laughs> If you have your kids, just tell me ready. Just type ready. Ready. Once your kids are with you, type ready. If you don't have your kids and you have their picture or something, just put their picture close. You put your hand on it. Even some kids will begin to vomit. Some children will begin to yawn after this prayer. I see serpentine spirit. I see evil spiritual husbands, spiritual wives. I know their kids are young, but you will be amazed. <laughs> I see spirit of stubborn, stubbornness. I see spirit of waste. Yeah, they are kids, but I'm seeing all this spirit. If you don't have them with you, just have their picture or something or their clothes or something you can use to connect to connect them to this prayer. Hey, hey. I want all the children, if they can, they can put their hand on their head. If they are too young, you can put it for them or just leave it like that. I want to pray for them now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every child that is listening to the sound of my voice to be free from every sickness in the name of Jesus. If there's any demon that has come over them, that has possessed them, I command those demons to leave now in the name of Jesus. Out of them in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. If there's any evil deposit, in the body, I command that thing to come out now. Begin to yawn it out now. Cough it out, burp it, sneeze it, pee it, poo it, fart it out. In the name of Jesus, I command all your destinies to be restored to you now. In the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy has stolen from these children, I command total restoration. Ah, I see children in cages. I break every cage ah, and I bring these children out of those cages. In the name of Jesus, whatever gift you stole from them, you devil begin to give it back in the name of Jesus give them back their star give them back their destiny in the name of Jesus every sickness in your body I command total healing in the name of Jesus you are free some of your kids will be yawning some of them will be coughing <laughs> some of them will rush to go pee pee cross <laughs> yes your child one of you your child was very stubborn after this prayer you will notice your child is different they will begin to love God in the name of Jesus they will be filled with the Holy Ghost in Jesus name you will see your children yawning you will think they are joking but no things are coming out of them even if they are not here with you wherever they are they will be feeling this prayer wherever they are oh my god nakunde santo there was somebody your child could not sleep at night 
after this prayer, you will see, in fact, your child will soon fall asleep. <laughs> your child couldn't sleep at night, always keeping you awake. In a few minutes, this child will go to sleep sound. <laughs> Somebody say, my son was yawning. <laughs> hey, Somebody, you're believing God for a car. You're believing God for a car. For a new car. You need a car. Put your right hand on your forehead. You're believing God for a car. You need a car. Put your hand on your forehead. Receive your car miraculously in the name of Jesus. I don't know how God is going to do it. But receive it in Jesus name. And there's someone you're believing God for a new place to leave. A house or apartment. Put your right hand on your forehead. Receive your new house. Your new apartment. In the name of Jesus. If somebody is believing God for a new job. Put your right hand on your forehead. Receive your new job right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, <laughs> Lord. I hear this name. I hear this name. Rebecca. 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 I hear healing. Rebecca needs to be healed. Rebecca. Rebecca. If you are here, Rebecca, put your right hand on your forehead. You demon of sickness, I command you to leave this body now in the name of Jesus. Out of her, in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of sickness in your body. Out in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Now vomit all of those nonsense in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I love you, Jesus. Hey, my God, I hear this. I hear, I hear two names. I hear Henry. And then I hear Helen. I hear Henry. And then I hear Helen. I hear accident. The enemy is planning accident for you. Put your right hand on your forehead. If there's anybody else that wants to tap into this prayer, I command that spirit of accident to leave you right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel every plan of the enemy concerning accident in the name of Jesus. You will not get involved in any accident. In the name of Jesus, you are free and the plan of the enemy will not work. In Jesus' name. Somebody, God said I should tell you to stop speeding too much. Oh, yes. <laughs> he said he has told you so many times, but you don't listen. He said I should tell you to stop speeding so much. You actually got some tickets already, but you like to speed too much. You have some traffic violation from speeding. And God said I should tell you to slow down. Stop speeding too much. He said he has warned you like three times. You've had some speeding violation, but you are still speeding. Ha. Oh my God, I see this. God said, if you don't slow down, there's going to be like a like a head-on, a head-on collision. Like a head-on collision. I hear this, a head-on collision. I don't even know what that is, but I'm hearing, if you don't slow down, there's going to be like a head-on collision. He said, you need to slow down. I'm hearing it strongly. He said he has warned you like three times to stop speeding, but you don't listen. You even have some traffic violation, some tickets from speeding. He said if you don't stop, there will be a head-on collision if you don't slow down. I pray that you will listen to vo the voice of God and you will drive Accordingly, in Jesus' name, amen. I hear it so clearly. You have some tickets from speeding. But you, I, I, I one of the reasons, oh my God, he's telling me, he said, oh my God, I hear this so clearly. Thank you, Father, I love you so much. He said, one of the reasons you like to speed, you that I'm talking to, 
is because you are always running late to work. God says you need to leave the house a little early. You need to prepare, prepare better. You're always running late to work, so you're always speeding because you're always running late to work. Yeah, you, you, yes, you. He said you're always running late to work because you don't come out ahead. You're always rushing. He said you need to prepare. You need to prepare. You need to leave the house a little early so you're not speeding, trying to catch up work. He said you're always running late to work. That's why you're always speeding. <laughs> Head on collision. I hear it clearly. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Somebody, you're going to have an encounter at the gas station. While you're filling up the gas tank, somebody, a guy will come and he will give you money to help you to fill your gas tank. The guy is an angel. You're going to have this encounter pretty soon. You'll be at the gas station trying to fill your gas. Your, we call it gas, but in Africa, you guys call it fuel. While you're doing that, a man will come and he will give you some money and to, to help you. You're not even going to ask. He will just give you. But that man is an angel. You're going to have an encounter. He's just wanting to help. But it's God that will send that one to you. And that money is not just the money that you receive. It's blessing your finances. Receive it in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone that wants to have an angelic encounter, angelic visitation, not in your dreams, physical, put your right hand on your forehead. Father, send your angels to pay them a visit. The ones that have their hand on their forehead, receive it now in the name of Jesus. May God send an angel to help you. In the name of Jesus. May God send an angel to bless you. In the name of Jesus. Some of you will feel tinglings right now. Some of you will feel tinglings right now. God says I should tell you to be nice to people. Because you never know when he will send an angel to you. Treat people nicely. Stop being mean. Treat people nicely. And oh my God. God says I should also tell you. That you should not just think. It's only when you see people that you'll be nice. That even on Facebook, he wants you to be nice because he sends, oh my God, thank you, Father. I love you so much. He says, he says that some profiles that you see on Facebook, they are not real people. They are angels. He says some people on Facebook that message you, they are not real people. The same way the devil has demons messaging people, God also has angels. He said even right now, there are some angels that are watching and commenting on these videos like human beings, but they are not. Oh my God, thank you, Father. He said, even right now, some of some of the people that are commenting on here, they are not people, they are angels. He said that the same thing with my programs, that some of the people that come to my programs, and he's told me this before, I've told it to you guys. He said, some of the people that he sends to my programs, they are not human beings, they are angels. So he's saying, I should tell you that it's not only going to be in physical, that you're going to have an encounter with angels. Even on Facebook, he says, some people that you see on Facebook, they are not human beings. They are angels that created a Facebook account. So God said I should tell you to be nice to people, 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 to be nice to people. To be Somebody, he said, I should tell you to change your attitude, that you have an attitude problem. You have an attitude. You are very snobby. He said, don't be, that, don't be like that. You will snob off an angel. Because your thinking is only when you see them, when you go to the store, because some of you rarely go out. So your own encounter may be on Facebook. He said, be nice. Somebody may randomly message you. You don't have to be rude to them. Be nice to them. Because they could be an angel. He said, some people commenting on here, they are not human beings. They are angels. Some of the profiles that are watching the videos, he said, they are not human beings. They are angels. When they are done with their assignment, they will go. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Everybody just type, thank you, Jesus. 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 You have a baby. Somebody, you have a baby that the baby doesn't eat much. The baby refuses to eat and is bothering you. You have a baby that doesn't eat much and is bothering you. And there's another person here. You have a child that eats paper. Your child is eating paper. 
There's one here, your baby doesn't eat much. And there's another one, your child eats paper. I want you to put your hand on your forehead for the child. You don't have to put the hand on the forehead for the child. You put, Just put your own hand on your forehead for the child. I command that paper eating demon to leave your child right now in the name of Jesus. And that demon that is causing your child not to eat, you that your child barely eats. I command that spirit to leave. Your child will begin to eat well, like a normal baby. And the other one will not eat paper anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, there's somebody here. You have a child that pee on the bed. Hey. Yes, you have a child that pee on the bed. There's actually somebody that have um, a teenager that still pees on the bed. Just put your hand on your forehead for the child. I command that demon to leave them right now in the name of Jesus. That spirit that wants to embarrass them. I command it to leave them. They will no longer pee on the bed again in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I actually see like a teenager, like a 14 year old boy that pees on the bed. But he's free now in Jesus name. Amen somebody they've done something to you they did this to attack your prayer life they did it deliberately to you and you kind of sometimes you oh my god thank you jesus sometimes you you feel like somebody did this to you they did it to attack you spiritually to attack your prayer life to attack your your walk with god they made you to be addicted to phone your cell phone you are so addicted that even when you want to take a shower, you almost feel like taking your phone there. Like the addiction is beyond normal. They did this to you so that you will not be able to pray, so that you will not be able to do anything. You are here. Like sometimes even when you want to shower, you feel like even taking your phone into the shower. Like yours is on a different level. You cannot get your hands off your phone. <laughs> One day you were about to shower and you almost took it into the shower. Somebody on YouTube said, it is me, Victor Victorine. Hallelujah. And somebody else, Felicia said, Mio. You were about to go shower and you almost took it. And you, you it's, God said, I should, I should tell you that you sometimes feel it. Like somebody has done something to you because you are trying to get off this, but you can't. It's not normal. Your own is not normal. They did it deliberately to you. To distract you. To make you not to pray much. Ha <laughs> ha. Put your right hand on your forehead. When I pray this prayer for you. Ha. <laughs> you can stay a whole day without looking at your phone. And you won't even miss it. It was an attack. It was witches. That's what they do. To make you so busy on your phone. In fact, the addiction is so bad that even as you watch my video, you are not focused watching. You have to be doing other things with the phone as you are watching. So it's not like you're concentrating. They use that to try to mess you up. Put your right hand on your forehead. I command that spirit of addiction to come out of you now in the name of Jesus. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Out of him in the name of Jesus. From today, you will no longer be addicted to your phone. You will use it when necessary. Only when necessary. You are free in Jesus name. If there is anyone here that is addicted to anything. If you are addicted to anything. And you are, you are looking for God to free you. Put your right hand on your forehead. Any other kind of addiction. Put your right hand on your forehead. Any other kind of addiction. Put your right hand on your forehead. You spirit of addiction. It's time for you to go now. Out of them in the name of Jesus. From today you will no longer be addicted to anything but Jesus. In Jesus name you are free. In Jesus name. Amen. Oh somebody I see this. I see this. I see this. You are having um pain. Problems with your navel. Your belly button. You are having pain or problem with your navel. Your bed. Your belly button. You always have pain there. And I see another person. Your belly button is like rotting or something. I want you to put your hand on your belly right now. I want to pray for you. But somebody else, you always have pain in your belly button area. You have pain. Like it's, it's painful. And then somebody else, your own is rotting. 
You're rotting in your belly button. Put your hand on your belly. I want to pray for you. Receive healing right now. Instant healing. In the name of Jesus. I want fire on that belly button right now. Fire, fire, fire. You spirit of pain. You spirit that is causing this woman's belly button to rotten. I command you to come out now. Out in the name of Jesus. You are healed. Oh, you're going to feel fire around that place right now. You are healed. And you will never feel pain again. In Jesus' name. Somebody you are even considering to go do surgery on it. But God has healed you. You're not going to need that surgery. Make sure you do a video testimony. Because you will feel instant relief. Even as I'm talking right now. You are free in Jesus' name. Hey, I see this. I see this. I see this. I see this. Thank you, Father. I love you so much. Somebody, you're always dealing with constipation. <laughs> somebody, you're always dealing with constipation. And then somebody, your stomach is always bloated. Even as I pray for you now, your stomach will begin to go down. In fact, you will even begin to fight. There's somebody, you're always dealing with, um, dealing with, um, what's it called? Akanababa Shanda. Constipation. And somebody, your stomach is bloated. <laughs> Somebody always constipated and somebody your stomach is just bloated for no reason. When I pray for you to just go down like a balloon that just, you know how you, you burst a balloon. You just have to believe. I want you to put your, um, put your, put your hand on your belly. Put your hand on your belly. Put your hand on your belly. You spirit of constipation. I command you to leave them right now in the name of Jesus. That spirit that is causing your belly to bloat, I command that spirit to leave right now in the name of Jesus. Belly begin to go down right now. Belly begin to go down right now in the name of Jesus. I want cleansing in that belly right now. I want you to fart. I want you to bop, cough, sneeze, vomit, pee, poop. I want total cleansing. I want that belly to go down right now in the name of Jesus. No more constipation. No more bloating in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. I see somebody, you have serious back pain. Even right now as I'm talking, you feel it. You have serious back pain. You've been having it for like three years. There's somebody else, you have back pain too. Yours is in just a month, not years. But even as I'm talking now, your back is hurting you. I want you to put your right hand on your forehead. Now, I command total healing in your back. Pain be gone. Now in the name of Jesus. I want instant relief. Instant healing right now. In the name of Jesus. If there's anybody else here that has pain in any part of their body. Put your hand on your forehead. Receive instant healing in the name of Jesus. Every pain in your body be gone now. And don't you ever come back. In Jesus name you are healed. No more pain. In Jesus name. Amen. Now check your body. Check your body. The pain is gone. You will be looking for it. And you will not find it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You will be looking for it. And you will not find it. Thank you, Jesus. You will be looking for it. And you will not find it. You will be looking for it. And you will not find it. Ha ha. Oh my God. You will be looking for it. Ha ha ha. You'll be looking for it. Ya kana masha drege di bas dre ondo shibre ekadada. Somebody said, she said, she said, woman of God, I was just now listening in the shower. Getting ready to take my son to football practice. When you say that someone here has a 14 year old son who plays football or is an athlete, that they shot an arrow for him to be crippled, but God just canceled it. I am, I am now just vibrating as I'm writing to you now. I remember when he was one, the, the, when the sixth grade, they tried in the, when he was in the sixth, when he was in the sixth grade, they tried to break his spine. He was slammed on the concrete while at school. They said he had multiple injuries to his spine. But I believe God kept him from being crippled then. They started bullying him because he is good at basketball. Thank you, Jesus, for connecting me to the woman of God. Praise the Lord. 
This is from Vatessa. Your son is free in Jesus' name. Amen. So that was her son. My God. My God. Somebody shout praise the Lord. She just sent me that. She says she's vibrating that she knew that that was her son I was talking about. God is locating people today. While I was praying, he kept telling me, say, I want to prophesy. I want like prophesy. And I'm like, huh, 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 what? Is the instrumental. This instrumental does something to me. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody, that somebody, your stomach feels lighter. God says your stomach feels lighter. You tapped into that prayer for constipation and bloating. Your stomach feels lighter. Your stomach feels lighter. Your stomach feels lighter. Hey, I see this one. Mm. There's somebody here. Mm. You have this thing. Like, like every time you want to poop, it's like a problem. It hurts you. It's like you have something in your in your area where you poop. Like it's always hard for you to poop. I want to pray for you. Yes, you are on here now. You are on here. <laughs> every time you want to poop, every time you want to go to toilet, you have you feel pain. Like there's something there. I want to pray for you for that demon to leave you right now. Somebody say, that's me. Hallelujah. Put your right hand on your forehead. Put your right hand on your forehead. I command that thing in your butt to come out right now in the name of Jesus. From today, you will poop freely. You will not feel any pain in the name of Jesus. Out of them in the name of Jesus, you demon. You are healed. You are free. You will be pooping freely now. And that demon will never come back to you. In Jesus' name, you won't need to take medicine or juice or nothing. You are free. In fact, for you that I pray this prayer, you have to give an offering. God just delivered you right now. You will never feel it again. <laughs> oh, there's somebody you have um, urinary urinary tract infection. U urinary, that's what they call UTI, right? There's somebody on here. You have urinary, urinary tracts infection or something like that. I, I keep hearing that. It's like UTI, right? You have urinary, urinary tract infection or something. If that's you, put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you right now. You have U, U, UTI or something. UTI, UTI. I hear it clearly. Put your right hand on your forehead. Put your right hand on your forehead. I command that spirit of UTI to come out right now in the name of Jesus. Out in the name of Jesus. You are healed from it. In Jesus name. Amen. If there's anyone here that has cancer or knows anyone with cancer or that is dealing with cancer, put your right hand on your on your on your forehead. I command you demon of cancer to leave this body right now in the name of Jesus of them in the name of Jesus I curse that cancer don't you ever come back to this body oh my god I feel tingling all over my body you are healed of cancer in Jesus name I I, I hear cancer there's somebody that has um what is um it's like a num a level three or something three what is what levels do they have I'm hearing something like a a three a three is, is there like numbering Somebody with that three numbering. God said you are healed. God said I should tell you you are healed. It's like, um, do they have different levels? <laughs> something like stage three. Yes. Is there like a stage three or something? I keep hearing, um, I, I keep hearing three, like three. God said I should tell you you are healed. Someone with that, that level of cancer just got healed now. You just got healed. 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 I hear it clearly. You just got healed. You just got healed. Oh my God. Somebody just praise God. I heard it clearly. If the person, if there's anybody else that has cancer that you know, you need to get them to this part where I prayed for cancer. Let them tap for that prayer and believe. Just praise God. 
a three, a category three or stage three or whatever three cancer person just got healed now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, if you know somebody in, in the hospital that is on the bed, let them listen. God says, I need to do mass cleansing for everyone. Put your right hand on your forehead. He said, I need to do mass cleansing for everyone. Everybody that is listening. Mass cleansing, mass cleansing, mass cleansing. I hear it clearly. He just made me yawn. And he said he wants to cleanse you guys. Put your right hand on your forehead. Close your eyes. Now I command mass cleansing, total cleansing from your head to your toe, inside and outside. Be cleansed of every evil spirit, every evil deposit. Right now, every poison, every charm, every voodoo, total cleansing right now in the name of Jesus. Out of them, in the name of Jesus. It is done. You will begin to yawn heavily. <laughs> Somebody, eh? The way you will yawn today, eh? <laughs> you will yawn and start to have tears come out of your eyes. <laughs> Somebody, I see you are going to poop right now. Somebody, you are vomiting. God says he's doing a mass cleansing. Mass cleansing for everyone. Mass cleanse. You see why it's good to be listening to this thing? You never know what's going to happen. It's like you will be yawning. There's somebody, your baby was sleeping, but your baby will just yawn now. Because the baby was in that place while I'm praying this prayer. It's like, it says it's a mass cleansing. You will yawn and yawn and yawn and yawn. And somebody, you will yawn so much, you will be so hungry. <laughs> it's like, as you are yawning, you are feeling weaker, weaker. And you will be so hungry. You will be. I see. I see marine spirits leaving. I see marine spirits leaving. Marine spirits leaving. I see marine spirits. Marine spirits leaving. Monitoring spirits leaving. He said, "This yawning, your yawning, is also cleansing your house. As you are yawning, even things are leaving your house. Things are leaving your house. Things are leaving your house. Things are leaving your house." It's not just you that is getting cleansed. Your house is getting cleansed too. It's like, I don't know what God is doing. He told me he's doing mass cleansing. Every demon hiding in your house, I command them to leave right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody, you're going to yawn for 10 minutes. <laughs> you will try to stop it, but no, God is cleansing you out. Somebody, you will soon be very hungry. Because it's like you yawn and yawn and you are very hungry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh my God. He said you are yawning. You are cleansing. You are peeing. You are pooping. You are vomiting. Something is happening. <laughs> hey. I don't know. I keep, I keep, I keep seeing, I keep seeing God trying to decorate some people by wearing them a new garment. God is about to decorate some people. He wants to wear you a new garment. He wants to wear you like a... I, I, I see somebody... It's like a... What's this thing called? Like a mantle. Oh my God. I, I've been seeing that, but I've not said it. But I have to say it now. It's like a mantle, but I need you to do something. If you are here, um, go get like a, a jacket or cloth and wear it. Like, like a mantle, but it's like a, 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 a scarf. Like, you know how that, like, it's, it's like a scarf. You know that scarf that you put, they put on their head that it runs down to the shoulder? I want all of you, I want to do something. Go get like a jacket. God wants to wear you a new garment. Somebody wants to wear you a new garment. If you believe this is you as I'm talking, if something is telling you this is you, Go get like a, 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 like if you, in Africa we call it wrapper or something, or cloth or jacket or something. Wear it or, um, or put.
put it on your head like you know when they give you like um oh my god a mantle like those kind of thing that those prophets or prophetess they wear i see them on facebook i just see people getting something like that like a new garment i want you to wear something like a jacket or like a cover or something like a cover but wear it from if you can put something from your head down i want to i want to i want to do something thank you jesus if you've done it just type done done it's like god is about to wear you something new that could be giving you a gift or promoting you or anointing you i don't know but i just see it what we're doing is more like uh, prophetic hallelujah it's like a mantle uh -huh. it's a mantle like a mantle some of you that what i'm about to do that that cloth will be special from now on for to you to be special there'll be a release of something on it thank you jesus all right i want to pray for you close your eyes Father, I keep seeing you wear them like a new garment. And I told them to get a garment or jacket or cover. Now, I want to release whatever anointing you have to release on them right now. For those that have this on, receive what God has for you. Be anointed now in the name of Jesus. Receive a new anointing, a fresh anointing. In the name of Jesus, receive that new garment that God has given you. Some of you will start tingling. Some of you will start getting cold. Some of you will start feeling God's presence. Some of you will start feeling warm. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. A new garment, a new anointing, fresh fire. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is done. Some of you right now, because when I was praying this prayer, my whole body was like... <laughs> There's been a release, a release of anointing, a release of grace, a release of power, a release of favor. And now you have received. So spiritually, I, I've been seeing you like wearing something new. And now we just did it physically. So you have received it. Some of you, that cloth that you even have on, you start feeling it warm. Like you start feeling heat. Like you're hot. Yeah, somebody, you feel heat, you will go turn on the fan. Like you will be suddenly hot. That cloth, keep it, it's special. If it's a dress, keep it. If you're a preacher or someone that does the work of God, whenever you wear it, you will feel an unusual anointing. Or whenever you use it to cover yourself, you will feel an unusual power come over you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say they are feeling hot. Hallelujah. Somebody say they felt goosebumps from their head to their toes three times. Wow. There's so much power here today. My God. My God. My God. My God. When I say my scarf is feeling very, it's feeling hot. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I hear this. Somebody, you have this cough that refused to go. You have this cough that refused to go. You're always taking cough drops, cough stuff. But it's not an ordinary cough. It's spiritual. Um, I want to pray for you. Put your hand on your forehead. You stubborn cough. I command you to leave her now. Leave him now. In the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. From today you will not cough again. In Jesus name. You are healed. There's somebody here. You, you have a running nose all the time. Even somebody. Your child is always having running nose. You know, like, like, there's always, like, fluid coming out of your nose. It's like you're cold or something. Like, there's always a running nose, running nose. Like, you have running nose, and there's somebody, your child always has running nose. Put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you. I command your nose to dry off now. In the name of Jesus, to dry up in the name of Jesus. No more no running nose for you or your child. You are healed. You are free in Jesus' name. Yeah, it's like you're always having allergies or something. If there's anyone here that is dealing with serious allergies, you're always allergic to stuff or always having allergies, put your right hand on your forehead. I want to pray for you. If you're always dealing with allergies, put your right hand on your forehead. I command that spirit of allergy to leave you in the name of Jesus. 
you are healed and that spirit will never come back in Jesus name okay now this one is a little sensitive but it's for the men I, I see a man here you have a problem getting up if you know what I mean it's like it's like you are almost impotent or impotent God wants to heal you right now put your right hand on your forehead if you're if you're a woman and your husband has that tap for him put your right hand on your forehead it's the devil that did that to you so you won't be able to take care of your your spouse put your right hand on your forehead I command that demon to leave you in the name of Jesus that spirit of impotency or whatever it's called that spirit that is causing you to be like that out of them in the name of Jesus out in the name of Jesus you are healed you are healed you are healed you will function properly your manhood is restored in Jesus name amen thank you father now some of these things might be embarrassing but the person knows what they are suffering so there's nothing to be ashamed of there's somebody on here you are still connected to a false prophet if you are here and you believe that you want to be free from any false prophet knowingly or unknowingly I want to pray this prayer for you somebody you are, you've been connected to a false prophet for 13 years and you don't even know it you even sing in the church choir you're listening to me you've been in that church for 13 years I'm hearing you've been in that church all your life 13 years you're in the choir and you don't even know that the person is a false prophet you sing in the choir and there's somebody else here you go to a church you're in the you're in the usher department and that that pastor I hear that pastor is a false prophet and his wife is a witch yeah nobody is doing well in that church you are in the usher there's another person in the choir you've been in that church for 13 years and you don't even know that you are in the church. Hey, there's somebody you are in Jamaica. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you live in Jamaica. And the church you go to is a false prophet's church. The man sleeps with women all the time. They do some kind of sacrifice or rituals there too. Yeah. Yes, I want to pray for you. And when I pray this prayer for you, for God to release you, I will also pray for God to open your eyes so you can see what's actually in the church. They've shut your eyes so you don't you don't see you don't see, but after this prayer, you will begin to see things that you never saw before. Put your right hand on your forehead. Put your right hand on your forehead. Thank you, Jesus. I disconnect you from every false prophet in the name of Jesus. From today on, you will no longer be led to fellowship there in the name of Jesus. And I open your eyes right now in the name of Jesus so you can see what's really going on there. Everything they have put in you, I command it to come out. And I command your destiny restored in Jesus' name. Starting from now, you will no longer have the zeal to go there. Even when they call you, you will be irritated and you will block them all. This is how you will know that you have been disconnected. May God reveal everything you need to know about this church, this person. And may God keep you safe, you and your family. I declare you all free in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, my God. As I was praying this prayer, I just saw how these false prophets, some of them put things in people. Sometimes they hug you. When they hug you, they put something in your body. Sometimes they hug you. When they hug you, they put something in your body. You know what I want to do for you guys? I want to bless um, a special water for you. Not just for drinking. You can drink a little bit, but you're going you're gonna to use it when you bathe. You don't have to pour. You can just mix it with the water you're bathing. But uh, I just saw like um, a false prophet hugging somebody and he used his hand to hold the person. But he put something on the person. And because of that, 
The person has like a skin disease. The person has like a skin disease. But that's not the only affliction they put on people. When they hug you or when they shake you, they rub something in their hand. And they, 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 when they touch your body, when they contact your body, they put something. So I want to bless this special water that when you bathe, you're going to put a drop or a little bit. in. If you bathe in a bucket or even if you shower, you just pour some on your on your head or or you can go back to this audio when you're ready to shower even your children and whatever they've done to you that is affecting your outer body or even your inner body whatever they put I just saw them hugging people and while they are hugging they are putting something on them so this is gonna take off everything because somebody you have this skin disease that is not leaving you you have this rash that is not leaving you so you're gonna you're gonna bathe with this water that I'm blessing. You can drink some, but it's mostly for you to bathe. If you have your water, let me know. And if you don't do it now, it's okay. When I'm done and you're ready to shower, you can rewind to that part. Even if you bathe ten buckets of water, one just bless one bucket that you will pour, and then the rest can be normal. That's fine. Hallelujah. And you will notice that your skin will be clear. You will notice that that thing that refuses to go, will go. Even you, there's somebody here, your face is messed up. You used some kind of makeup, and since then your, your face has been messed up. That makeup that you bought is from the marine kingdom. The person that has that line belongs to that kingdom. They've already sacrificed. Uh -huh. Thank you, Father. Let me tell you, when you buy all these makeup, these wigs, and some of these things, you have to bless them. Even close, just say a short prayer. Father, bless this in Jesus' name. Just bless it and whatever power that they put on it. You can't run away from things because we live in this world. We have to use, we have to dress up, we have to. But just say, even if it's just a short prayer, I soak this in the blood of Jesus. Or I, I bless this or I anoint this in Jesus' name. Very short, but whatever power. Because some of these makeup, some of the people, some of these celebrities that have all these makeups and stuff. Some of them be belong to the Illuminati or the, the, these things they sell is a way of trapping souls. It's, it's a way the devil uses their name, their brand to get souls. So you buy some of these things and you use them, but you don't know that these celebrities are working with the devil. So even lipstick, even perfumes. Yes, even me, the woman of God, when people give me all these perfumes and stuff, whenever I get gifts from programs, I have to bless them before I use them. Even there are some that even after I bless them, God will tell me, still don't use it. And I'll just trash it. You see what I'm saying? So, if I'm the woman of God and I'm blessing these items, just like the way you bless your food before you eat it, food that you cook, you bless it, right? How about things that you buy outside? It's okay to just say a short prayer over it. I want to bless the water now. I want to bless the water. I command... Your water to turn into the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. I anoint it in the name of God, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. As you drink this water or as you bake this water, every affliction from false prophet, every touch from an evil person, as you use this water, it will wash it off in the name of Jesus. This is no longer ordinary water. It is now the blood of Jesus. I release the fire, the grace, the power, the anointing upon my life into that water. This is now miracle water. Use it and begin to testify. Your skin will be clear again. You are free in Jesus' name. Amen. Whenever I'm speaking, most times it's the Spirit of God speaking. When it comes to makeup and all those things I said, not just makeup, even clothes, when you buy clothes, even underwear, when you buy underwear. I used to do this before when I was younger. When I buy underwear, I just wear them. You have to actually go, you have to wash them first. You know, just because they are brand new doesn't mean you just wear them. Wash them first. You know, like just wash them. Especially underwear. Before I don't wash, I just buy and I wear. Don't worry. Just obey what I tell you. You you will thank me later. Even if they look brand new. We have washing machine in America. You don't have to wash deep wash. It could be like a light soft wash. But still wash them first. Before you... You use them. 
And most times, when you start to feel a certain way about something or someone, most times you are right. That's discernment. Discernment is when you are feeling a certain way about something. You are feeling uncomfortable around somebody or feeling uncomfortable. That's discernment. Most times you are right. Don't let the devil make you feel like you are not right. If you feel something about somebody strongly, don't let anyone convince you to, 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 to accept somebody that you feel a certain way about them. It's discernment. It means you can discern that something is not right with this one. Some of you on here, you have the gift of discernment, but you don't know how to use it. You're not sure. You think it's your, it's just you, but no. God is telling me to tell you, there's somebody on here. You always, you're always, you're always, um, you're always right, but you, you wait till the last minute before you find out you were right. Is you have a strong discernment. You're able to discern, but sometimes people convince you, and you think it's just you. If you don't feel right about somebody, you don't have to get close to them. If you don't trust somebody then most most likely you are right. For those of you listening, that you want that gift of discernment of spirit, put your right hand on your forehead. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive the gift of discernment in the name of Jesus. This way you can be able to discern if a spirit is of God or if it's not of God. You can be able to discern things so that way you don't fall prey to the enemy all the time. And when you feel something about someone, like strongly, you feel it strongly, or it keeps coming to you, most times you are right. Stop waiting till last minute to find out that you are right. Hallelujah. I don't know who this message is for, but I believe there's somebody on here. You've been right. But they make you feel like you are too judgmental or you are too this. Then at the end of the day, you are right. <laughs> Don't let people make you not to understand your gift. Don't let people understand your gift for you. Do you understand what I mean? Don't let people without gifts make you lose your own gift. Did you hear what I said? Don't let people that have no gift make you lose your gift. All this time you're watching me, you're receiving, you're fasting. Do you know what you're receiving? You're receiving a lot of gifts. So don't let someone that has zero gifts make you lose your own gift. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So if you feel if you feel a certain way, like like the false prophet, there were some of you that you, you could discern that something wasn't right with him and you kind of did not want to watch him. You didn't watch him or... And at the end, you were right. You just never connected to him. You never felt like... You just didn't feel... I'm just giving you an example. Because you have a strong gift of discernment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's a gift. These gifts come from heaven. Don't, don't lose it. The more you use God's gift... The better you, you become at using them, the better you, you understand them. The more you use God's gifts, the more you understand the gifts that you have. If you don't use it, you won't know. Just like healing. One of my followers messaged me because I see a lot of my children. I call you guys children because I see you growing, right? She messaged me and she said, I have a powerful testimony, mommy. My play daughter in Liberia was very sick. The first hospital said she had malaria. They treated her and discharged her within three days. She got sick again and they took her to a different hospital and she didn't and they said she didn't have blood. I told her that I felt it in my spirit that it was spiritual. So the night before they took her to the hospital, I prayed for her over the phone. She was very weak. I prayed for her over the phone. She was very weak. I started to send everything back to the sender and ask angels to pour buckets of fire, just how you always pray, mommy. 
as I was praying, I saw a man sitting. Listen, no. She said, as I was praying, I saw a man sitting with his hand under his cheek, looking disappointed. If I tell you who, who, who sent me this, you'll be shocked. But don't worry, let me finish reading it. He said, as I, I started to send everything back to the sender. And I asked angels to pour buckets of fire. Just how you always pray. As I was praying, I saw a man sitting with his hand under his cheek, looking disappointed. Right? I asked her after the prayer, who was the older man sitting looking at her? She said, no one. I asked, where was her grandfather? She said, not with her. I told her that whoever that person, whoever that wants her dead is going to confess and die. She just called me and said her grandfather died last night. They called her while she, she was in the hospital to tell her that he confessed that he was going to kill her. But now he is the one dying. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am tapping more into your grace, mommy. She was praying and she saw a man looking disappointed. And she asked the girl, who is the man? She said, she doesn't know. She said, what of your grandfather? He said, she's, he's not with her. She said, okay, anyone that wants you there, they will confess and die. After the prayer now, the next day or so, her grandfather is dead and he was confessing that he was going to kill her. And now the grandfather is dead. Do you know who this person is? Princess Moko. Someone that I saw grow. Someone that started watching. She received the gift of tongues. Before you know, she found herself in that false prophet church. He, he laid hands on her, took her twins. The one that stole her twins and killed her babies. You know, she's always watching. She, she never left. Now she's praying for people and seeing things and saying things and they are happening. You guys know Princess Moko, the one that came on my video saying that she was pregnant with twins and that false prophet killed it. The twins. She prayed this prayer for somebody. She saw a man disappointed. She asked. I told you you will get shocked. People in this ministry are growing. I told her, I say, wow, powerful. May God keep using you in the name of Jesus. So me, I see all these ladies. I see them grow. <laughs> they are using their gifts. The more she keeps praying for people, the more she will be seeing things. The more she will be speaking things and they will happen. Like this is powerful. <laughs> the man confessed that he was trying to kill her and he died. She just sent it to me. I don't know if she's listening, sweetie. But she sent it to me. I was like, Fuck, this is this is what we call power. <laughs> power. So if you're if you're connected to this ministry, let me tell you, eh? You cannot be the same. There's no way you'll be watching the videos. Doing fasting with us, tapping, doing all these things, and you are the same. Never. Even Juliet was telling me she preached. I think she even posted a testimony. Juliet, that we were doing deliverance on. I told her, you could pray for your family. She said, hey, my mommy. Now she's preaching on Facebook after the last fast, not this one, the one before, that she was tapping when God was speaking through me, that she received a powerful anointing. Now she's praying and people are testifying already. And she's preaching. She just started preaching. No, she's already posting testimony on her wall. <laughs> hey, you guys, eh? Don't let all this thing pass you. <laughs> you better stay here and grow and learn. Don't be in a place where you will be the same after 50 years. You are still the same. Meanwhile, people are coming here. Few months, few years. They collect power. They, they, they do big, big things. <laughs> That's why the enemy wanted to drag you away because they don't have power in that place. There is power here. <laughs> There's power. I told you when I mentioned the name of who sent me this testimony, you'll be shocked. The man confessed just as she saw it. Just as she saw it. She would have been in that false prophet place and and died there where there is no power. You see? One time prayer. 
The man confessed die. <laughs> All of you here have received things, but you don't know. That's why I say, when you use your gift, you will begin to understand your gift more and more. Sometimes, suddenly, let me teach you guys some things here. Eh? Let me teach you guys some stuff. I like to teach you guys something, right? Wow. Jennifer Brace was a woman of God. I took this scarf off my head and I can prominently feel something on my head still and something running down all over my head to my shoulders. I have finally received, wow, the, the mantle. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. You see, after this fast that we just did now, if suddenly you notice that after this fast, I'm giving you an example, or after any other fast, or after whatever, maybe you had an encounter in the sleep or something, or you had an impartation, and suddenly you just notice that people that are sick keep coming your way, or anybody calling you keeps telling you that they are sick. Somebody say they have a testimony. Root. Kangwa, what's the testimony? Type it. You know, it said uh, somebody keeps coming. You know, somebody keeps coming to you, and during the conversation, they are saying they don't feel well. They are saying they are they are feeling sick. Not one person, you know, like several people. You go to work. Your coworker is saying my belly is hurting. I don't feel good. And then your somebody call you. Say, I didn't come to work today. I don't feel good. Right? And you go on Facebook. One of your friends say, please, somebody pray for me. I don't feel good. In a day, you've seen like four or five people. You've seen like four or five people commenting, you know, saying they don't feel good or talking to you. They don't. Sweetie, do you know why God is bringing them to you? Because God wants you to pray for them. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. <laughs> God wants you to pray for them. That's why everyone around you is talking. They are not feeling well. They are not doing this. Because you have received the gift of healing. Are you hearing me? It's not a coincidence. God wants you to pray for them. You know, like, God wants you to pray for them. Is God saying, what are you waiting for? Why don't you pray? And you don't even have to pray a long prayer. You could just say you are healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> and in a few minutes, they'll say, wow. My God, I don't, I, I don't feel the pain in my belly anymore. Then you will begin to know that you have received something. That is not a coincidence that all these people around you are telling you they are not feeling well. You go on Facebook, somebody is saying they don't feel well. God is trying to tell you that I have given you, you know, I have given you power. What are you waiting for? You understand? Can't you just pray for them? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just an example. I'm just giving you an example. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when God speaks, God can speak using people that um, that have a condition or that, are, that that have a need for what he has put in you. So you will be surrounded around people. You will be surrounded by people that are going through something that you have the power to help them. And you don't think it's, a, it's never a coincidence. Right? And when God puts power in you, you don't... You are not the one doing it. It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the power of God. The anointing. Even if you just say you are healed in Jesus name. It's as simple as that. You don't have to shout for 30 minutes. Because you will be too weak. And if you start like that. Shouting for 30 minutes. One hour. People will be expecting you to shout all the time. The day you don't shout. They will think nothing happened. It could be a simple prayer. And tell them, believe and it is done. Unless God gives you a specific instruction. Like sometimes Jesus does some prayers differently. You know, some prayers, he does it differently. Otherwise, as simple as you are healed in Jesus' name. And it is done. 
I want to show some of you who have the gift of healing right now. I want to give you a confirmation that you have received the gift of healing. Not from today, oh. maybe another time. Just raise up your right hand. Raise up your right hand. For those that are not sure, raise up your right hand. Father, for everyone that you have give, given the gift of healing that is not aware of it or not sure, I want you to give them a sign that they have received the gift of healing so they can begin to do what you want them to do, so they can begin to help people that need to be healed. Right now, give them a sign in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, receive it. Now, some of you will feel a tingling. Some of you will feel fire in your hand. Some of you, your hand will start to shake. Some of you, your hand will be heavy. Some of you will start to speak in tongues. If you fall in this category, it means you have the gift of healing. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you, your belly is like your belly will start to shake like something is shaking in your belly. This prayer I prayed, if any of these things I said happened to you, now if it doesn't happen, it doesn't mean you don't have it. But if it happened, because I said God should give you a sign, God will give it to you. And then another sign is I pray that God will reveal to you maybe in your dream or vision that you have received that gift. But for now, this prayer I just pray. Some of you, your hand will be tingling. Some of you to be shaking. Some of you to be heavy. Some of you to be hot like fire. Some of you, it's your belly. Your belly will be shaking like like like. Like something movement in your belly, like anointing is flowing. Some of you will be speaking in tongues. That means you can pray for somebody to be healed. Hallelujah. A lot of you in this ministry have received the gift of healing, but you don't know. A lot of you have received wisdom. A lot of you have received all these little gifts. I won't call any gift little. Every gift is powerful. But these gifts that they don't really show like that. Like even discernment. It's not something that shows like that. Gift of healing or faith or knowledge. Or wisdom. They don't show like that. Speaking in tongues, yeah, you speak. But the other ones... You may not even know you have it until you start to function in it in that department. Hallelujah. Somebody say my right hand is tingling. I burped and I yawned. Hallelujah. Alright, so now you know. So when people come around you and they are sick, ask them, do you want me to pray for you? If they say yes, you pray. You have to ask. Don't force your prayer on nobody. Do you understand? Because even Jesus, sometimes when they come to him for healing, he will say, what do you want God to do for you? Even the blind people that came to him, he saw they were blind. You know, but he, but he still asked them, what do you want God to do? Because just in case they don't want healing, you can't force healing on nobody. You know what I mean? You have to make sure that's what they want. Before you try to go force it on them and they will tell you, did I tell you to heal me? Did I tell you to heal me? You know, there was one story Pastor Isaac told me that there's a guy that was on a wheelchair and the man of God or so was praying and just went to pull him from the wheelchair say, you are healed, get up. And the man got angry and went back to go sit on the wheelchair. And they were wondering why. And he said, um, did I tell you to heal me? That um, if, if, you, if you heal me from this disability how will i be getting the monthly check that the government sends me the monthly disability check say leave me alone i'm okay like this you know so just because you see somebody on wheelchair it doesn't mean the person wants to get off that chair they probably want to stay like that you, you see what i'm saying so don't just force yourself because you got a gift of healing boom you want to pull them from the chair my dear be careful though before you enter trouble there's another um, funny one that I, I watched one time. It's like a joke. A skit. A comedy skit. 
two guys went to go meet a false prophet or so. A man that had the list of how much he you will pay to get healing. To cast out one demon is like 10,000 naira. To cast out two demons is 20,000. To cast out local demon is 5,000 naira. This is Nigerian stuff. I watched on Facebook some time ago. To cast out international demon. They had different, they, they just had like a board with, it's just something funny, right? But they had international demon, local demon, two demons. To cast out two demons, the price of two is, is cheaper than price of one. So, you know, like a discount. So these two guys came to the um, guy and they said they want they want deliverance. So the guy said, okay, and they chose what they wanted on the board. So the, the man started praying for the guy. Mm? He said, you spirit of stealing, come out. He said, amen, amen. You, and the next one, he said, you spirit of lying, come out. The guy said, Amen. He was happy. And then the man answered, say, You spirit of fornication. <laughs> you spirit of fornication. Womanizing, right? I mean, fornication. Come out. The guy did not say, Amen. <laughs> As he said, I say, You spirit of fornication. Come out. The guy opened his eye. He looked at the pastor. I mean, the false prophet. He looked at him one kind. He said, What are you doing? Did I tell you to remove this spirit? <laughs> that day I watch that thing, I laugh and fall for granted. He said, did I tell you to remove this spirit? You remove the spirit of lying. I say, amen. I didn't complain. <laughs> you remove the spirit of stealing. The fornication. Did I fornicate with you? I fornicate with you. Why you come out that spirit now? Put it back. I need that spirit. <laughs> I love it. I love the guy said, put it back now. I need that spirit back. Did I tell you to remove that one? <laughs> the guy won't fight the guy. Oh. He said, put that spirit now back. I need it. What kind of thing is this? Did I mention to you that this spirit was a problem to me? <laughs> <laughs> so the man now said, fornication, please come back. Spirit of fornication, come back, come back. He said, hey, hey, hey. thank you. <laughs> so when I watch that and I say, wow, why you are thinking you are doing deliverance? Some people don't want to, <laughs> some people don't want to be free from something. So <laughs> he said, put your hand on your head. Let me free you for what? They want to know exactly what you are freeing them in case you want to remove a spirit they like. <laughs> <laughs> in case you won't come on spirit when they like where we the man said I, I fornicate with you so why do you have a problem with this spirit <laughs> I love it because me I like to laugh too much so this kind of thing eh? I love that they are nearly choco <laughs> I say, eh, yeah. because even though it's funny, I learned something from it because I don't just laugh like that. I like to learn a lesson from it. The lesson that I learned from there is, is not everybody that need deliverance, you know? So I have to be careful. I need to know exactly which spirit that is tormenting you exactly, you know, before I start to do like I'm anointed, I want to free. Mm -mm. Tell me what you need before I go bring out things that you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> all right guys i have to go now i haven't slept last night i just came to release